Hello, teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to today's lesson on the placement of dimensioning. In our previous lessons, we have seen the arrangement of dimensions and the methods of dimensioning on standard features and scale of a drawing. Let's briefly revise the previous lesson as usual. In our previous lesson, we have seen the two commonly used methods of dimensioning, namely chain and datum dimensioning. Chain dimensioning places dimensions in a line from one feature to the next, while datum dimensioning originates from a common line or point. We've also discussed how to dimension circular features, arcs, curves, chamfers, angles, holes, screw threads, slopes, and tappers. Moreover, we talked about the relationship between scale of a drawing and dimensioning. Regardless of the scale used, the dimension figures shown on the drawing always represent the actual size of the object. In today's lesson, we will discuss the dimensioning of views, dimensioning on limited space, and dimensioning of pictorial drawings. Students, dimension should be placed in suitable manner so that reading of them will be easy and comfortable. There are several placement rules of dimensions on views. We'll discuss the major ones in some details. The spacing between dimension lines should be uniform throughout the drawing. Dimensions should not be placed within a view unless drawing becomes clear by doing so. Dimension text should be placed only in one system of dimension, either aligned or unidirectional on one or more views of an object. Dimension text should not cross dimension, extension, or visible lines. Well, students, let's practice what we have just learned. The view of an object is given on the screen. List the dimensioning mistakes and then dimension the object correctly.
Welcome back. Did you do well on the exercises? I'm sure you did. Let's do the activity together. How many dimensioning mistakes did you find? Let's see. There are six dimensioning mistakes in the object. There is a spacing problem between the top two dimension lines. Two dimensions are placed inside the view. Dimensions should not cross dimension line. Dimensions should be placed either in a lined or unidirectional system. There should have been gap between the extension lines and the object. The hole should have been dimensioned. Students, study the correctly dimensioned object. Well, students, dimensions should be easy to read and minimize the possibility for conflicting interpretations. Here is the next group of general dimensioning rules. Dimension lines should not cross extension lines or other dimension lines. Extension lines can cross other extension lines or visible lines. Extension lines and center lines should not connect between views. Leader lines should be straight, not curved and point to the center of the arc or circle at an angle between 30 degrees to 60 degrees. Dimensions should not be duplicated or the same information should not be given into different ways. Students, Let's check how much you've understood the lesson. List the dimensioning mistakes of the object given on the screen and then dimension it correctly. Use the given time properly.
Well, students, have you identified the dimensioning mistakes? Excellent. Let's do the activity together. How many dimensioning mistakes did you find? Let's see. There are four dimensioning mistakes in the object. The leader line used for the hole should have been straight and pointed to the center of the circle. The center line should not have been connected between the views. The text should have been placed midway between arrow heads of the dimension line. Dimension line should not cross extension line. The correctly dimensioned object is given on the screen. Well, students, how are you doing so far? I hope you are doing fine. Dimensions should be placed in such a way as to enhance the communication of your design. Next, we'll discuss other group of general dimensioning principles. Dimensions should be grouped whenever possible. Dimensions should be placed between views unless clearness is promoted by placing them outside. Dimensions should be attached to the view where the shape is shown best. Dimension should be taken from visible outline than the invisible or hidden line. Students, let's check how much you've understood the lesson. List the dimensioning mistakes of the object given on the screen and then dimension it correctly.
Welcome back. Did you get it right? I'm sure you did. Now let's see the solution together. There are six dimensioning mistakes in the object. The dimension should be placed between the views. The leader line should angle up. The hidden line should not have been dimensioned. Dimensions should be placed on a view where feature shown best. Dimensions should be grouped whenever possible. Long extension line should be avoided. The correctly dimensioned object is given on the screen. Well, how are you doing so far? I hope you are doing great. Students, next we'll discuss dimensioning of objects or views on limited space and dimensioning of pictorial drawings. When the space between the extension lines is too small to permit placing of the dimension line and the dimension, an alternate method of placing them can be used. The figure on the screen clearly illustrates how to dimension on limited space. Since pictorial drawings are usually not used as working drawings, they are seldom dimensioned. However, when it's necessary to give dimensioning on the pictorial representation of an object, the following basic principles of pictorial drawing dimensioning should be noticed. Dimension line and extension line should be drawn parallel to the isometric axis. It's better to use a line system of dimensioning to dimension arcs and curves in pictorial drawing. Leaders and associated knots should be placed in a plane parallel to the face on which the dimension applies. The figure on the screen clearly illustrates the dimensioning of pictorial drawings. Well, students, let's do some activities to check how much you've understood the lesson. An object is given on the screen. Dimension it correctly.
Welcome back. Have you completed the exercise? Very good. The solution to the activity is given on the screen. Well, students, I hope you have gained a lot of concepts from today's lesson. Before we come to the end of the program, let's summarize the main points. Dimensions should be placed in such a way as to enhance the communication of your design. Dimensions should also be selected carefully and placed on a view that shows the contour of the feature to which they apply. Dimensions should be placed outside the object for clarity. Moreover, dimensions should not be repeated on drawings. Well, students, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Keep on practicing on the methods of dimensioning. In our next lesson, we will learn about the principle of development. Until then, thank you teacher and thank you students. Goodbye.